We marvel at the brilliance of Grand Admiral Thrawn on today's episode of Star Wars Battle Breakdown. In 9 ABY, Thrawn's Imperial Remnant was steadily taking control of entire star systems through the use of blitz, hit and run tactics, unconventional warfare, and secret technology. Today, we discuss Kat Kristak, a planet of little obvious strategic importance, but which Thrawn most likely identified as a staging point for further incursions deep into the galaxy. To say we don't know all the details about this battle would be putting it lightly. The Last Command really picks up as it's ending, so today I'll be making some guesses, especially regarding ship numbers and battle timeline. Don't take them as absolute canon, but rather my interpretation of what probably would have happened. My goal in this video will be to fill in missing information and to paint a somewhat clear picture, which I think should be fun. So what do we know? Well, during the Battle of Kat Kristak, at least a medium-sized New Republic force was involved, comprised mostly of Mon Cal cruisers and dreadnoughts. Specifically, we know that Garambel Iblis controlled a fleet of 15 ships, and I think it's unlikely that he was stationed defensively around the planet as his fleet, including the Peregrine, Rogue Squadron, and other captured Katana Fleet dreadnoughts were fairly mobile, responding to Thrawn's movements during the war. We also know that by the end of the battle, at least three Mon Cal cruisers survived. On the other hand, at their most powerful, the Empire had massed over 20 combined Star Destroyers and Dreadnoughts. So here's the assumptions. The initial Kat Kristak command force was likely made up of the Mon Cal cruisers only. I base this on dialogue we get between Wedge, Garambel Iblis, and the commander of one of the Mon Cal cruisers, which suggests that Rogue Squadron and thus Belt Iblis' dreadnoughts were responding to a call for help. So I think this planetary defense force, again comprised of five Mon Cal cruisers, would have been engaged by a mid-sized Imperial task force, including an interdictor cruiser, two or three star destroyers, and four or so dreadnoughts. The composition seems likely because Thrawn would have wanted a force that wasn't absolutely overwhelming beyond any sort of fight ability, but which would challenge the present planetary defense forces. Why? Because I believe his secondary goal was to trap and destroy as many New Republic assets as possible. So the task force jumps in and holds position, the interdictor especially, far back from the fleet where it will be safe. At this point, I think the New Republic sends out a call for help, and Garmbel Iblis's fleet, comprised of 15 dreadnoughts, as well as the Rogue Squadron responds. This is where Thrawn really gets tricky. First, he activates his interdictor cruiser. Now no one can escape. However, there's a second purpose here, the Thrawn Pincer. Space Dock and Star Wars Explained covered this very well in a joint video, which I'll link in the upper right hand corner, but I'll give you guys the quick version. The Pincer uses the interdictor's artificially created gravity well to force ships out of hyperspace. Now, if two allied ships are working together, this creates the possibility for a very exact hyperspace jump. Typically, hyperspace jumps aren't very accurate, but you can very easily manipulate a gravity shadow, and if you know an incoming ship's vector, you can basically predict exactly where they'll be pulled out of hyperspace. So assuming you have one interdictor in place, you can basically perform very exact hyperspace jumps. Depending on the trajectory of incoming ships and the position of the gravity bubble, ships could likely be brought in almost anywhere on the battlefield. Thrawn would have likely had his reserves in very nearby but different systems, which would present him with the most tactical options. With superior numbers, including now at least 6 Star Destroyers and 20 ships in total, Thrawn pushes hard on the New Republic, destroying at least one cruiser as both sides field fighters. One ship in particular, the Mon Calamari Star Cruiser or Thavin, likely pushes to an uncomfortable degree on the Interdictor Cruiser. In response, Thrawn, with incredible intelligence, calls two more ships, Victory Star Destroyers, into battle jumping them within mauling distance of the Orthaven. While this is going on, Wedge Antilles and the rest of Rogue Squadron are caught up in Starfighter engagements. Wedge sees the vulnerable Mon Calamari ship being railed on by Star Destroyers from each side and desires to help it. However, between him and the ship is a Starfighter screen. Here, the New Republic employs the famous Bell Iblis A-Wing Slash. 
So this is a fairly complicated maneuver, I'll try my best to explain it, but even Wedge doesn't realize what's going on, he thinks Bel Iblis is ordering a retreat. So two or more X-Wings take a lead position, hiding behind them A-Wings who match their speed. If close enough, the A-Wings should be very difficult to spot, both by the naked eye and on sensors. Once the opposing fighters have set their sights on the X-Wings, they break off in opposite directions. The fighters will presumably follow them, at which point the A-Wings will reveal themselves, shooting through a newly formed hole in the fighter screen. Now, the enemy starfighter can respond, but it's very difficult to do so, as they will be flat-footed. So, the X-Wings engage and eventually mop up the fighters, while the A-Wings take the battle to the Victory Star Destroyers. Not only do the A-Wings hit them with munitions, but they also take some pressure off the Mon Cal Cruiser, which in turn responds, disabling both of the Victories with all of its ion cannons and turbo lasers firing at once. Free from the attack, the Orthaven rushes towards the Interdictor. Thrawn again calls more ships to assault the cruiser, this time Dreadnoughts, however the Mon Cal Cruiser is moving too quickly and the Dreadnoughts are engaged by Rogue Squadron. With the Orthaven bearing down on it, the Interdictor is facing the possibility of destruction and is forced to shut off its gravity well generators in preparation for a retreat. The entire New Republic fleet, which likely by this point has a set hyperspace route within their computers, then jumps to light speed, barely escaping. However, this is not at all a win for the New Republic. First of all, they lose one of their planets, they also lose several cruisers while not inflicting any serious damage on the Empire. But what else do we learn? Well, Garmbel Iblis has a very impressive military mind, but even his effective tactics were only able to prevent a New Republic rout, not achieve victory. As Wedge realizes departing the battle, Thrawn is just on a whole nother level. This is also a textbook Thrawn victory. First of all, he never shows his full hand. I have no doubt that he had extra reserve ships waiting had the New Republic summoned a second fleet. He also makes use of every resource available to him. I'm sure the dreadnoughts he called in were from the Katana fleet, and he uses technology in very innovative ways. The Thrawn Pincer would become incredibly well known and used by subsequent admirals probably until the end of space warfare. But what did you think about this battle? And again, I tried to fill in really as much as I could. In the last command, we only really get the perspective from Wedge, and it's fairly limited. But once again guys, if you enjoyed this, please drop a subscription and a like on this video, and don't forget, the entire play playlist is linked in the upper right hand corner and also in a pinned comment. Until next time, thank you guys so much for watching, it means the world to me. As always, this has been Eckhart's Ladder, may the force be with you.